Okay, uh, thank you, Bohong, for the kind introduction. And uh, thank you, everyone, for attending. So uh, I'm Bole. Uh, I'm from Bertoldi Group in Harvard University. Uh, <clears throat> today, I'm going to talk about uh, one of our recent work collaborated with Eisenberg Group on the programmed topological transformation of cellular microstructures. Uh, and we are doing that using uh, simply a droplet of liquid uh, which induce transient softening and uh, assembly. So, <clears throat> uh, cellular structures. So, cellular structures are widely used in many fields of science and um, um, engineering. Um, so, for example, in mechanics, they have been harnessed to build those uh, high strength material, and in chemistry, to build uh, catalytic materials, also in optics to build negative uh, refractive indices material, and all, of course, many others. So, um, sorry, most, in, most interesting property of, um, of the cellular structure is that their property is not only determined on the composite material, but also um, is controlled by the shape, size, and more importantly, the topology of the cellular structure. So, uh, therefore, in attempts to build structures with tunable properties, people start to investigate in reconfigurable cellular structures because shape changing means property changing. And uh, external stimuli, something like swelling, temperature, and uh, electric field has been uh, used to, uh, to activate the underlying material and that will in turn change the shape of the cellular structure. However, it is very hard, if not possible, uh, for those kind of global field to change the fundamental property of, the, uh, of those lattice. Uh, what do I mean by fundamental property? It means the number or connectivity of nodes and compartments. So for example, they can uh, probably those methods can change from a square lattice to a deformed square lattice, but uh, it is very difficult for this method to change, for example, from a triangular lattice to a hexagonal lattice. This is because they are of completely different um, topology. So those changes actually require you to uh, carefully working around the node to fold, stretch, uh, and acting on the nodes. So those will require a complex control of localized field individually at each node. And uh, besides, um, those uh, methods also, most of them also suffer from complicated fabrication, long response time, and the irreversible or fail to hold the actuated state uh, after the uh, stimulus is off. So it's very interestingly that uh, this can be solved by, um, maybe it can be solved by uh, using simply a droplet of liquid through elastocapillary effect. So we all know that when liquid evaporates, it will form many six lines, which will exert capillary force. Well, normally those capillary force are too weak to deform the structure. Um, but if the structure is very small or it's very compliant, then the capillary force will be significant enough to serve as a powerful tool to deform or even assemble the um, structures. And finally, the adhesion between the structures may serve as a, uh, uh, may, may hold the reconfigured uh, shape of the structures. So if we apply this method to, uh, to, to cellular structure, then the complex network of Manisa may serve as the desired localized force field at each node. And besides that, it's also, this kind of procedure is also compatible with simple fabrication, uh, fast evaporation time, and also adhesion can serve as, uh, to maintain the, the, the actuated state. So now the problem is uh, what will happen if we see add a droplet of liquid to the cellular structure and let it evaporate. So we can envision that as the liquid start to evaporate, it will form a manisai near the node. And such manisai will tr start to trying to deform the edges so that it will zip up the neighboring edges. And finally, 
um, transform the connectivity of the nodes. So if you zoom out, you will find the topology of the lattice could also be uh, changed. But now there is a problem because as we look, in, uh, look closer to the each edges, we find that those kind of um, uh, transformation, unlike the isolated bin or, or pillar, it will include a lot of stretching and folding of the walls, which requires much higher energy for simply bending of a, of a, say, a, bending of a pillar. So in those cases, capillary force um, may be not enough for such reconfiguration. So to solve this kind of problem, we introduce a new protocol that is widely applicable to all different materials and uh, um, geometry. So our key concept is the introduced liquid not only forms um, many lines uh, on the architecture scale, but also it can first infiltrate into the material and transiently um, soften the material. So that when the meniscus acting on the structure, it is acting on the structure with softened material. And as the liquid left the material itself, the material will become stiff again, regain its stiffness. So the key concept here is the liquid in the environment will always live prior to the liquid in the uh, material. So that means the capillary force will always acting on the softened material. And uh, before and after transformation, the material will maintain stiff. So uh, to further quantitatively study this, we develop a very simple model. So we consider two walls from a general lattice forming an angle of alpha. Uh, and uh, after the deformation, after the transformation, the, 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 this substructure will be deformed and we can calculate the elastic energy of such deformation and then compare that with the capillary work uh, did by the meniscus line. Uh, so we know that the capillary work need to be larger than elastic energy uh, for, the, for such transformation to happen. And the such um, balancing equation well gives us a very important quantity that is a critical Young's modulus of the underlying material. So what that means, it means uh, the material we selected, its Young's modulus must be smaller than this E critical for the assembly to happen. And we can plot this E critical through our theoretical model um, as a function of the angle between two walls alpha and the thickness of the wall uh, B. Um, this plot certainly gives us a very clear guidance about the material selection and the geometry design. For example, if you have a structure with thicker walls, you will require a material with uh, smaller Young's modulus, which means you, you need a softer uh, structure, a softer material. Uh, so in the light of simple fabrication, as well as a reasonable stiffness, we choose a dimension here, um, which is a triangular lattice with 100 micrometer uh, length. And according to our theoretical model, this gives us a E critical of 175. So if we plot this critical modulus on the commonly used material, we find actually this is um, uh, softer than most of commonly used materials. But it doesn't matter because our strategy um, uh, says that uh, we can transiently soften those materials down below E critical so that the assembly could happen. And then after the assembly, um, the liquid, as the liquid left the, as the material, it will be stiffened again. So uh, to demonstrate our concept, we select a uh, liquid crystal polymer uh, as a model system um, to investigate uh, this procedure. So we first built a micro plate with the same dimension as the uh, lattice we're choosing here. So as we swell it by acetone, we find that the Young's modulus was initially 23 megapascal. It was um, decreased down almost three orders of magnitude to only 80 kilopascal uh, when swollen by acetone. So it's also elongated because of the, uh, the swelling. And then uh, as the acetone um, evaporates from the uh, structure very rapidly, the, 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 the plates regain its Young's modulus. And at the same time, uh, due to the kinetic trapping of the crystalline polymer under fast swelling, 
the plate is trapped in the deformed state. So to verify that, we further uh, heat the plate uh, up, uh, up to Tg and we find it's relaxed back to its original state. So as I will mention very uh, quickly in our system, both the striping mechanism and adhesion between the plates will maintain the reconfiguration after the capillary force ceases. Okay, so after all this um, background knowledge, we finally um, built a triangular lattice uh, using the, uh, the, the, the dimension we selected. And uh, as we add a droplet of acetone into the, this lattice structure, we find that it swells the lattice and then the capillary force start to assemble them. And in the end, it becomes a hexagonal lattice. The snapshot clearly shows how the, the uh, solvent buckle and um, assemble the structure. And this is a real time movie. So the whole process is only a few seconds. So as we compare the uh, SEM image of the initial and assembled structure, um, we find that the node connectivity has been changed from three to, uh, sorry, from six to three. And the number of nodes is also doubled because we find that originally there was a triangular lattice and then now it forms a new node. So the number of nodes is doubled. And because of that, the, this um, compartment uh, vanishes. So the total number of compartments also halved. And also the size of each compartment is doubled. And furthermore, because the assembly causes the uh, coalescence of two adjacent uh, walls, the wall thickness is also doubled. So remember, this, is, uh, the stru this structure is still attached to a substrate. So the bottom of this structure is still triangular. Then the top is hexagonal. And from the tiered uh, view and the uh, profilometer 3D scanning image, we find that the new formed node is actually um, a little bit shorter than the original node. So that means the transformed structure becomes a, a real 3D structure comparing to the quasi 3D structure, uh, initial structure of the triangular lattice. And as we were shown later, all these changes, topological changes or height profile changes will contribute to the, um, to the property changing of the cellular structure. And this kind of um, transformation is very robust. So if we take the transformed hexagon lattice, lattice and we, uh, we bring it under certain harsh conditions such as uh, high temperature heating above Tg or swell it in liquid for 10 days, it will remain, remain hexagonal lattice. So this property is very good for many application, but also uh, it could cause a problem in reversibility. Uh, the simple question is how can we reverse it? How can we change it back to the original triangular lattice? So in order to do that, we need to overcome trapping and adhesion uh, altogether. So this could be done by um, using a solvent that swells the structure a lot so that upon large swelling, the two adjacent wall uh, will be peered off by the large swelling. And then the structure can be transformed back to a triangular lattice. But now the key problem is when this kind of liquid evaporates, um, it will assemble the structure again. So this will counteracting the disassembly uh, process. So uh, why is that? It's because we are always using one liquid uh, to acting on two scales. And because the liquid in environment will always leave before the liquid in material so that the capillary force will always acting on the softened structure. So in order to um, delay the appearance of capillary force so that capillary force would acting on the stiffened structure, we can introduce um, a system of two liquid. So liquid one, as I said, will swell the structure a lot and peer off the assembled structure. And because the liquid one has a, uh, is more volatile, it will leave the structure first. So when the liquid one lived, because of the presence of the second liquid, it will not, it will not form any meniscus line. So it will not deform the structure and not assemble it again. And by the, ten, by the time the second liquid evaporates, because the material has been stiffened, because the liquid one has left, so that the meniscus, uh, the capillary force here is no longer able to deform the structure anymore. So that we can keep the um, triangular lattice. 
So actually what we are doing here is we are using each liquid to govern one scale. For example, we're using liquid one to swell the structure, um, swell the, the material and the lift, leave the material. So those are in micro uh, molecular scale. And we use liquid two to acting on architecture scale to generate capillary force. So we are decoupling those two scales by a mixture of two liquids. To, to demonstrate our idea, we use DCM as liquid one, acetone, uh, acetone as liquid two. And as DCM swells, it, it swells a lot so that it appears off the assembled um, edges and uh, acetone delays the appearance of capillary force. So at the time, acetone uh, evaporates. The, the generated capillary force is not no longer able to deform the stiffened structure. So we can achieve a reversed transformation from hexagonal lattice to triangular lattice. So such um, modular control actually can do much more than just disassembly. For example, by tuning the ratio of two liquid, we can control how much liquid once swells the material and how fast it lift, lifts the material. So by doing that, we can not only reversibly trans, uh, transform in from triangular lattice to hexagonal lattice, but we can also trap a lot of intermediate states. So remember, all these structures are originated from a, uh, the same uh, structure, the same triangular lattice. So uh, this is, behaves just like a uh, microtransformer. You can just tune it by tuning the ratio of two liquids. So let's go back to the initial uh, transformation of triangular lattice. So far we have been focused on a small area of this uh, transformation, but actually as we zoom out, we find defects do exist. And those defects actually, it originates from a very uh, interesting bifurcation uh, behavior of the node formation. So be because maybe you have noticed this is uh, when the node of a connectivity six transform to a connectivity of three, it has two ways of doing that. It can form a Y shape, which we refer as phase one, or it can form a reversed Y shape, we refer as phase two. So when those two, time, uh, two kinds of phase coexist, you will have a phase boundary, which is the defect. So defects can be bad many times, uh, and sometimes uh, maybe we want to avoid that. It is also simple to avoid that is we can perturb the initial, um, initial node a little bit so that the structure will always favor phase one over phase two. Experimentally, we can do that by fabricating those curved walls so that it will always form this Y shape. So this is a very exaggerated <coughs> demonstration. Um, the true structure is actually not distinguishable from the uh, perfect lattice and uh, also as shown here. But this time, because each node knows where to go, then it can form a perfect um, hexagonal lattice as shown by the SEM image here and even in a larger scale. So this is 1.5 by 1.5 sample. All of them are almost perfect hexagonal lattice. So remember they were transformed from a triangular lattice within seconds. And uh, this defect can be a good thing, especially when we can design them. For example, we can design the left part of the structure to be phase one and the right part to be phase two. And we would expect a formation of phase boundary or defect after the transformation. And we can apply this to more complex shapes and use this way to design um, uh, complex patterns that will emerge only after the transformation. Like we demonstrate here using a hard shape and a hard shell. So remember those kind of uh, information encryption is very robust. It is because the, inf the information is not stored on the boundary. It is stored in every node by their preferred phase. And uh, uh, I will be, uh, I need to go quicker on this. This is when we have, um, uh, we can apply this method to more complex geometries. And those complex geometries consist of um, a node uh, with different angle. And according to our theory, the capillary force will um, always try to close the smaller angle compared to larger ones. And following this um, design principle, we can uh, fabricate 
all different kind of geometry and we can predict uh, how will it transform after the uh, liquid evaporates. And furthermore, we can um, in integrates this kind of technology uh, with the um, responsive material. For example, we can uh, build a diamond lattice using a Z-aligned uh, LCP, and uh, we can use liquid to reversibly transform from a diamond lattice to a hexagonal lattice. And then we can heat it up to activate the um, underlying LCP material so that we can undergo another um, transformation from hexagonal lattice to a brick lattice. And uh, of course, uh, there's a lot of applications for those um, cellular transformation. For example, uh, because as I said, we uh, some compartment closes upon transformation, so we can use that to trap particles. And uh, also uh, due to the um, geometry changes, lattice changes, and the change from single wall to double wall, the acoustic property of the cellular structure is also changed drastically as shown by the band gap structure tuning here. And our transformation would also change the surface property for cellular structure. For instance, the friction property will change uh, before and after the transformation and also the wetting property. And this video give you a simple and a clear demonstration of how the configured, uh, how the transformed hexagonal lattice is more adhesive to a droplet sitting on the initial triangular lattice. And also we can design all this anisotropic um, uh, wetting property using diamond to hexagonal lattice transformation. So uh, in conclusion, we designed a, a strategy to realize complex uh, topological transformation for micro scale cellular structures. And those kind of um, transformation technique is uh, compatible with simple fabrication and it's very fast, it's robust and also reversible. And furthermore, uh, by tuning the uh, ratio of two liquid in the mixture, we can do modular control over two scales. This gives us programmable intermediate states, uh, which is a micro transformer. And lastly, uh, I want to emphasize that the vast design space here, because for each materials, we can use different responsible materials, functional materials to combine with liquid has different swelling property and evaporation property also with even more complex lattice geometry or even 3D structures or nanoscale structures. Um, so with that, I would like to thank my collaborators, especially uh, Shu Tong, uh, who did most of the experiments and my uh, advisor, uh, Katya Bertodi and also Professor Joanna Eisenberg. And I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bale. Excellent talk. Thanks. Uh, let's see. Question from audience, Shao Ting. Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, hi, Shao Ting. Hi, Bo Lei, a very nice talk. I learned a lot, very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I'm uh, actually pretty interesting. So first of all, your fundamental experiment is very interesting. So that is very clear. Uh, so I'm, I'm interested on your fabrication. Can you give a little more on the details on uh, how how do you fabricate uh, such beautiful as uh, the serial structure? Actually, I noticed your skill bar. Uh, the size of your pool actually is pretty. Uh, is hundred micrometers. It's already also pretty decent. So, can you give me some more details on that? Yes, uh, but uh, I have to confess that I'm not doing this uh, fabrication, so I uh, will try my best to to it's fine. understand yeah. your question. Uh, so uh, according to my understanding, uh, what we are doing is first we, um, uh, we age the silicon weaver. Uh, so if we want a hexagonal lattice, then we aging a silicon weaver with, this, with the same geometry as this. Then we yeah. use this uh, silicon weaver as a mode to mode PDMS, so you get a reverse mode. And then you use that uh, PDMS to mode the LCP, which is uh, the material we are using here. Then you use some uh, chemical uh, ways to erase the PDMS, then you will get the uh, final LCP structure. I so see, that's I uh, see. The, the, roughly the fabrication procedure. I see, I see. Thank you, thank you very much. Very nice work. Thanks. Okay, 10, please. 
uh, yeah, thank, uh, thank you can. for nice uh, talk. Yeah, I have a question. I, so I think you show very nice like a triangle folding to hexagonal lattice. And yes. um, my question if like you, you, you make your cell longer, is it possible to observe hierarchical folding? Like you first oh, fold yeah. from a hexagonal, then the wall will be buckling again. Then you may see they form another like a, so another level of folding. Yeah, that's an excellent question. This is also what we were thinking before. Um, for, for example, you can see here, uh, if not a hexagonal lattice, if, if here you, you have a um, square lattice, and after the transformation, you could have a, another squared lattice, but it will be larger. And this square lattice for sure can undergo another, uh, uh, another round of those transformation. So to answer your question is, uh, for now, because our structure is attached to a substrate, so if you do those uh, hierarchical folding, it will uh, cause the larger and the larger energy to do that. So up to now, it's not possible. But if you, you can build a structure that is uh, freestanding, not attached to a substrate, uh, then, probably, then probably it is possible. It, is, it was also a, a very uh, interesting future work we are thinking about. OK, thank you. Yes. Okay. Catherine. Hey, Bole. Hi, Cass. As always, um, I was wondering, have you done any modeling on this? Because like, it's very interesting that um, I guess at each like grid, you have that binary um, variable to control it. So are you, uh, when moving to like optimization kind of region, are you thinking about doing modeling and then do some optimization on it? Yes, that's another very good question. We're actually uh, working on that as a follow-up work. Um, so as I said, uh, I'm probably here, I was going very fast, is uh, here the design um, idea is very simple because we, all this uh, structure, it looks very complex, but they are all consist of a single node, a single types of node. So we can use our uh, simple theoretical model to predict. But sometimes you will have a, a more complex case that you don't know what will be the outcome of such transformation uh, ahead. So at that point, you need to um, calculate uh, the energy of each configuration and trying to minimize energy to get the uh, final reconfiguration shape, uh, reconfiguration shape. So yeah, we're working on that. And we hope to see some uh, interesting transformation from uh, simulations, and then we can do experiments to, uh, to verify that. Great. Uh, another question is that related with the extension you mentioned, you want to look into 3D structures. I was just wondering like whether this topological mapping would remain the same when you scale it up to 3D structures. What, what kind of challenges do you, pre, like, do you predict for like modeling it on a 3D structure? Yeah, that's another good question. For, for 3D structure, I would think the procedure to be very similar, but of course, much more complex. So uh, for example, for 2D structure, we know that many side uh, will form on the edge, but for 3D structure, uh, probably we don't know where the uh, many will be um, when the liquid is evaporated. Uh, so first is maybe to determine at which locations where we have Manisa. And uh, another point is the Manisa might not be a 2D shape. It might be a 3D Manisa. And uh, um, probably computationally, it would be harder to predict. But experimentally, I think the concept is similar. You can fabricate a 3D structure just like what you did for a, a 2D structure. But for sure, it's, very, it's harder to fabricate. And then you can um, you can use the liquid to 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 immerse it and evaporate, and then see what happens. And as it's, as at, at this point, I have no idea what will happen. But what we are sure is the liquid will deform the structure somehow. Thanks. It's very cool, and also like I guess like the application you showed with like encoding like the information with a with a phase change is very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Wally. 
Hey. Thank you for your last talk. Yeah, I have uh, two questions. First, I'm interested in the material LCP. I, uh, I'm wondering how much is the expansion in volume uh, after uh, the LCP is swelled. Oh yeah, uh, it depends on which so uh, which liquid you are using. Uh, so for the uh, uh, for the assembly process where we use acetone, the swelling ratio is around ten percent. And uh, such 10% swelling certainly helps the assembly of the structure because uh, after the assembly, the, the, each wall is stretched. So if you have a initial swelling stretching from the solvent, uh, it will help assembly. And then for the, for the other case, oh, sorry. For the other case, for the deswelling case where we use DCM, the swelling ratio is much harder. It's probably 20 to, like in this case, the swelling ratio probably 20 to 30%. Uh, percent. Uh, I, I don't know if it's volume. It should be length, I think. Okay. So Twenty okay. or thirty percent in length. Yeah. 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 Uh, is there any uh, solvent that can have a uh, very small expansion? Uh, I think so. Uh, sometimes when the uh, because in the, here we are using a mixture, so the swelling ratio is not that large. But sometimes I remember we could get something as large as uh, 50%. So that's the, the structure will be peeled off from the substrate. So in the, in, in the, uh, if you look at the video, it seems like the structure uh, explodes. Okay, okay. Uh, and the second question is about the response time. Uh, if we... Uh, I think uh, the structure responds very quickly because it's, it has a very thin wall. Uh, if, the, yeah, if the structure is get thinner and bigger, uh, uh, will the uh, response speed uh, become slower? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's an excellent question. Yes, so uh, all this fast response, of course, we need to contribute that to the uh, size of the structure. If the edges become thicker, uh, for sure the liquid takes longer to, to infiltrate into the material and the softening process will be, will be slower and then the whole process probably be slower. And on the other side, as I said, um, so if you if we go to the model here, when you have a larger the scale goes larger, it's almost impossible to have those kind of assembly because the critical will become a few kilopascals and it will collapse probably only under its own weight. But then your other questions go to smaller scale is an interesting uh, idea for sure. It will work. And another thing we are thinking is. If we go to a smaller scale, probably we don't even need this softening technique. Probably we can do that on some uh, even metal something. If you go to nano scale, when the E critical is comparable to something like uh, many megapascal or even gigapascal, then probably you can use that um, even for metal. Yes. Okay. Um, currently, I'm uh, trying to uh, looking for some materials that can. And it's responsible really quickly, even in the macro scale. Very interesting work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.